the boys. No, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it like that. I don't want to do it like that. Welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. I am your host, Will Compton, the boy Taylor Luan. He's out in Canada. We'll get to that in a second. What's imperative, what is important right now is to shout out the truck of the summer, to shout out the truck of Bustin' with the Boys, the Silverado. It is Silverado, Silverado summer, boys. Think of all the possibilities, off-road adventures, the do-it-yourself projects, and the hardcore work that goes into driving a Chevy Silverado. The Silverado has the capability and technology to make this summer your best one yet with nine different Silverado miles to cho- models to choose from this football season. Uh, engines that range from the powerful Turbo Max with a 6.2 liter V8 and the Duramax diesel. You can count on Chevy power and performance to get anything done. And like many of you, the boys, we've been hitting the road a lot lately. We'll be hitting the road this fall for our fall tailgate tour, going to all, all, all the different colleges. Game recognizes game. I know when I step foot uh, in South Carolina, in Georgia, in Nebraska, in uh, Notre Dame, all the places that we're thinking about going that are on the list. The list is not out yet, but they are on the list. We will be driving our Chevy Silverado, and we know there's there's going to be a lot of Chevy Silverado drivers out there. Head over to Chevy.com and check out the Silverado and all the Chevy trucks it has, the official truck of busting with the boys. Now, that's the good news. The bad news, but I'm going to feed you back again with some good news. The bad news is um, the... The boy Taylor is still vacated, is still evacuated from his spot in Canada where, where they're out visiting his wife's family. They're at they're at a resort right now. Um, they had to push out because of all the wildfires going on. Also, my wife is not back yet from California. It, I'm sitting here. It's Tuesday. Flight got canceled on Sunday. Monday, uh, I think she's getting the fly out now. She's going to land at like one in the morning tonight. But she isn't back yet from California from all the floods and the, the hurricanes going on there. The West Coast is... Is in a blender. I heard there was an earthquake out there. The West Coast is in an absolute blender. However, the good news is that that they will be able to do being stranded is they will be able to stra- stream Paramount Plus. It's almost that time of year and football season is right around the corner. And Paramount Plus is once again your home to stream the NFL on CBS all season long. Paramount Plus is our sponsor for this training camp tour and all the interviews you've been seeing with Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, uh, soon to be Derwin James and next week uh, Coach Josh McDaniels. But you can stream Paramount Plus on any device at home or on the go and follow the road to Las Vegas to watch the boys like Josh Allen and Joe Burrow try to dethrone the defending champion Patrick Mahomes. You can watch all your local games live every Sunday. Here's where it gets nice. Here's where it gets good. For $2.50 a month for 12 months. Do that math. It's 24 then you got to add, it sounds like $27. That's right off the top. Visit ParamountPlus.com slash NFL to start your free trial today. The offer ends on September 20th. Stream the NFL on CBS Live on Paramount+. Plus. I think one thing to note, we've gotten a lot of, there's been a lot of talk, been a lot of, a lot of things circulating on the internet due to the Chris Stefano interview last week as far as the Dawson jerseys. I want to say... We are a pro Jersey. At least 50% of us is a pro Jersey podcast. I am all about the I'd jersey. say more than 50. More than 50. Yeah, I'm, th- I'm thinking the two. If you're splitting the two hosts down the middle. I know Taylor has had some takes before, and he's got a stance on this. It slipped in that Chris Stefano interview. He's like, we have a thing. And I, when I was watching that clip the other day, I'm thinking, oh, fuck, I got looped into this thing. Like, that's not... That's not how I that's not how I operate with the fans. I'm all about the verbal abuse that happens everywhere. I'm all about the venting. I'm all about yelling at the TV. I'm all about living through your favorite team, your favorite teams and favorite players. I'm also about wearing their jerseys. N- now it makes me want to start buying jerseys up. I we got to start, you know what I mean? We got to get it almost makes you want to get involved in the culture more because there is no football without the fans. I'm not doing that as a political take either. Like I love all of the fucking arguing the banter the chat the group chats the talking shit i love it all dude i'm all about it so i just want to make that clear the the stefano interview you're probably thinking well why didn't you say anything on the stefano interview well, that was our second interview that day we were traveling all like we were traveling all week long it's a little that interview was like a little like you know it, it got long-winded it got a little at that point you're kind of just you're kind of sitting there you're glad chris is doing all the talking you're you're glad he's funny and keeping you entertained and everything like that to where you're just kind of sitting back and letting it happen and that was not a hill like we've had that conversation before on bus with the boys about the jerseys and everything else that wasn't the timing where it was like okay we need to we need to intervene here and and and, uh step in however all to say what percentage 85 percent 85 percent pro jersey podcast over here yeah, maybe more, maybe more, maybe more, maybe more. I know our our fan base makes it like ninety. We're we're ninety nine percent pro Jersey on this podcast. Yeah. Well, I, I hate that the big guy can't be here because I'm sure he would interject and have a and have a hopefully a new stance as well. But 
you kind of hate talking without the big guy here so that way we could go back and forth about it. However, I needed to make that fucking clear that we are your boy. We we rock the jerseys. We rock the jerseys. Did I'm going to be You also rocking. see the the clip got 3.3 million views. I know that's what made me think like, "Oh man, this is like a little this 500 likes on Twitter which they got a lot of hate. A lot of hate, rightfully so love. though. Yeah, we do love that. I even had a tweet that the kind of popped on me, right? Talk about the L. Anybody who has to take is a walking L. And I was saying it, not directing it at Taylor or Chris. I just like get irked pretty much when Taylor says these things. Because <laughs> he said it before. It, like That's what I'm saying. It's when, been a conversation before on the podcast. Even when Tennessee beat Alabama, he was like tweeting at me like this guy thinks he played and like he thinks he actually won the game. I'm like, I know I'm not. The, I'm not. Know, the fans are just as crucial to the sport as the players. Um, obviously, that with a grain of salt there, but yeah, yeah, man, it's like children can't even buy fucking jerseys. Like, how are they going to purchase a jersey? Like, the they don't adult, have the purchasing power. They ain't got the wallet, dude. To, yeah, the adults got to be the consumer. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. People are like, oh, will CYA? He's covering his ass, doing damage control, and everything like that. It was more so like you know. When you get lumped in based on somebody else saying something, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stand up and speak for yourself before you get lumped into this. You know what I mean? Mm. We're guilty. By, I'm guilty by association. Who knows how much damage that clip's done everywhere on all the platforms? I just had to, I just had to get out there on Twitter and be like, hey, I need to clear my name. Your boy is a pro. <laughs> I'm all ball. I'm all fandom. I'm all all of it, dude. I've been obsessed with it since a wee little pup. Um, good news. This intro will be fast today. Derwin James sits with us. Derwin is fucking. All time. If you don't know who the guy is, you should know. One of the best safeties in the game was voted the number 30 player overall in the NFL top 100 players. Uh, he was, uh, we asked him about that. We asked him about being ranked the best safety in the NFL amongst the peers, battling injuries. I know he, uh, he tore his knee, right? He had a bad injury that he had to bounce back from. And you can just tell this guy, he's a very, he's a very focused player. He's very intentional with the way he moves and everything else. And uh, you're going to really like hearing from him. He doesn't do a whole lot of interviews. He's not out there a lot. Their PR person was saying like, oh, it was really cool how much he he was opening up and being himself and everything else. Uh, but we asked him about that. We asked him about those things. Uh, his defining play of his career, being a box safety versus a coverage safety, his worst losses. We obviously had to dive into the wild card last year when the Jaguars came back down, what was it, 27 nothing? Something like that. 28, yeah, 24 bad. nothing. Um, go, to the, go to the main thing. And then uh, also his growth as a leader. I know he's, you can tell when you ask about that, his eyes kind of like light up and you understand that he was uh, real, again, real intentional about how he was moving throughout that progress and making that growth and development as a leader and everything else. And being the position he's in, you can tell he loves playing uh, for the Chargers. You can just tell, like sitting with all those guys, you can tell that these guys want to bring, um, you know, a second place overall in the division for the for the AFC West behind the Raiders. Um more good news. There's not going to be all, there's not going to all there's not going to be all the ad reads, boys. This is a nice little bonus episode by by the boys for the boys for all the fans. You can see we got all of our sponsors sitting up here right now. I took a nice little uh, morning too this morning. There's nothing like uh, plant source fibers cleaning out your colon. We have our whistle pig that you guys see. We'll give one word for each. The ten year is a flex. The bussin means football, and the the rye their six year rye means Friday rye day. Twisted T, you guys know what they represent. America, football, and Spooktober. And then uh, Body Armor, the, the official drink of busting with the boys, they play offense when it comes to your hydration. And when you have a, a name like Body Armor, it's also a water built for defense. Body Armor defends you against all the bullshit and all the pussies of the world. Uh, but we will go ahead and jump into this episode with uh, Derwin James. It's, again, it's an awesome interview. If you're watching right now on YouTube, if you happen to be a Chargers fan who's came back for a second time, don't mind to hit the... Don't, don't, don't be against hitting the subscribe button for the boys. Uh, drop in the comments, whatever, whatever kind of comments you want, you want. The comments are literally the best thing on the fucking internet. I think Twitter comments are one. YouTube comments are sneaking up there. Sneak up there. I haven't been in the TikTok world a whole lot. Do TikTok those get, are those fun? are crazy. They, they go, they're It's really like good. you almost watch a video and then immediately go to comments because you're either looking for someone to identify with or looking for a ridiculous statement. We we need to do a tier dark soon. Best comments on the internet, best comment platforms. So that would be solid. That. But I do need to get a little bit more. 
yeah. engaged with that TikTok. It does seem like there. That's There's a big one. A lot one. out there on TikTok. Instagram. Instagram's fun too, but not not like not fucking as personal. Yeah, not like not like Twitter. Not like uh, YouTube, man. Especially when you got the good bases. I know we talked about it before, but Shane Gillis is the dogs out there under his. Like you go under any podcast, the uh, Matt and Shane Secret Podcast, and you just uh, you get in those comments like it's the best. But uh, without further ado, Derwin James, subscribe to Bustin' with the Boys wherever you get your podcast. Big hugs. Tiny kisses. How you feel like your body, like your mentally, like how you, you feel different in a different space being lighter, 50 pounds? Yeah. Lighter? Oh, like mentally? Yeah. Like I look in the mirror and I don't hate what I see. That's yeah. that's mentally better. Yeah. Yeah. But like uh, from like a body standpoint, like besides my knee, like everything feels good. Yeah. Like my, my, my neck hurts a little bit, but like get it up in the day, like you feel all that weight off your body. Oh, what's up, bro? It's, it's tough. I can't wait to experience my first fall. Like, legit, like, even right now, August, like, flying out somewhere. It's just crazy to me. Yeah. And then October's going to hit. Yeah. I'm going to be able to go do yeah. Halloween with my kids and rip around and not have to worry about who I'm playing or what the, what does this guy's move do or anything like that. Yeah, man. It's just cool. Yeah, man. It's cool Enjoy being that, man. For real. It's definitely, when you're in it, you're just in it. But when you get to where, like, your weekends and everything else is free and you're not, like, you know, when the boys would lose, you know, you got to go on Monday and you're like, fuck, well, you know, what's the, what's the vibe going to be like today? Yeah. And when all that performance-based driven yeah. industry that we're in every day mm. is done and over with, you're kind of like, well, fuck, I mean, mm. wait, yeah. oh, tomorrow go get, go get something, go get something at the coffee shop. Yeah. Live, live. It's awesome. But even when you go through injuries, like, uh, like I'm going to ask you about your injuries in the beginning, like you make a Pro Bowl your rookie year. Yeah. And two years in a row, like you get injured in camp, right? Yeah. And that had to be like, Especially yeah. that early, getting a Pro Bowl, being like, oh, I'm I'm the man already in the NFL. Like, a dream has been made. Yeah. And then you go into that, like, that second time getting hurt in camp, you had to be down something. Like, fuck. But it definitely was humbling experience. The first time I went down, it was kind of like, you know, it's part of the game. You know, it comes with it. But then the second time, when, you know, a week away from the season, it, that one kind of hit me a little deeper. It was a little, you know, and then I realized I, I wouldn't be returning for the season again. I was just like, man, like, what do I have to do? Like, what am I doing wrong? I just go to question and stuff. But after all that, man, I, I locked in. And, you know, like you said, get back to the bases, get back what you used to, get in routine and uh, get ready to go, man. How, how is it like with the uh, with the Chargers? They, you, we were kind of talking a little bit before on how they're kind of like, there's a, there's more youth and everything else. So it seems like they take care of you guys during training camp. Yeah, they definitely. Kind of some, some of the old school mentality ways that are out there. Um, we, we definitely know our standard, man. We work hard here and uh, we get it in. Um, and like I said, we compete at a high level, but we also got coaches that are young and they understand the bodies and, you know, getting the guys to the games and they understand how to take care of us here. And they, they do a great job of doing that, you know, and I feel like we're in a good space with that. How, hey, he's extremely what? polished. You're extremely Very polished. polished. Like you you can tell that you go up to podiums every day after games. Yeah. And have to talk to everybody. Yeah. You know what to say and what not to say. Nah, man. Too professional. Nah, man. I'm, I'm gonna say what I say, but I, 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 <laughs> nah, I speak my mind. But I know yeah. to say. I know how to talk. It's hard though, cause you like when you're in it and you're like, all right, you go up to the podium. You obviously have somebody come up to you and be like, okay, like this yeah. is and this. Don't talk about this. You yeah. don't want to give them anything. I'm sure you guys have like media rules and stuff like that. Yeah. And it is you are. Very well spoken from that standpoint. It, man. For sure. It. How uh rank 30, top 100, congratulations. It, uh Minka Fitzpatrick was the only safety ranked ahead of you. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about where your ranking was in the top 100? Um, I just got to get out there and work, man. I can't, there you know, goes. start off this <laughs> argument. <laughs> I got I to gotta get out there and work, man. I just got to work a little harder and, um, like I said, make How more plays. How do you plays. feel about it? Like, when you see 30, are you like, hell yeah? No, nah, I'm like, hell nah. Like, it's like, opposite oh, for me. I'm like, nah, I'm better than that. I know it's, you know what I mean? I know I should be top 10, so I know I'm better than so that. So you felt a little disrespected. For sure, for sure. And that you're not the number one safety. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You are a beast. You are a beast. Yeah, you are, you are a fucking stud, dude. What's your relationship like with Mika? Oh, we got a great relationship. Um, You know, we always been competing with each other. You know, coming out 2015, we was in the high, same high school class. Um, and then college, you know, of course, we was first-round picks. and So we always been competing in our careers. You know, we got a great relationship. We talk at the Pro Bowls and, you know, the different stuff. But it's, it's a good relationship. Talk at the Pro Bowls. Yeah. That pro, yeah. Uh, plural. Yeah. Do you, uh, speaking of Pro Bowl, dude, do you ever feel like, do you like the fact that there's not a game anymore? Or do you wish 
It went back to a game. No, I kind of liked it, the format they had last year. It was really? better for our bodies. I feel like it was it was solid. I mean, we had more fun with it, you know. Las Vegas. I feel like you you haven't been to the Pro Bowl. I've yeah. been with you a couple, uh, one, one or two times, but I was like, you don't really know what the tempo is. You don't want to kind of hit the guy too hard. Especially you your first time. Yeah, your you first don't really time, know what to do. Kind of, you feel what I mean? So it's like it's it's better that you know we can still have fun and then give the fans what they want to see too. Mm -hmm. In the game, if you had the opportunity to tee off on a punter the way Sean Taylor did in the Pro Bowl, would you have definitely, done it? Definitely, definitely. Sure. No, you're lying. For sure, I would. would. You do that? Yeah, I would. I would. I would. Come on, man. That punter got so mad too. Who who was way. that punter? Do we yeah, know that was? Brian like, Mormon. Like we still talking about this play 20 years later. You know what I mean? 10 years later. So that is just crazy. You know what I mean? So you want something like that? I got. I got to get them. What do you think is like the most defining like play of your career so far that people might be talking about 10 years from now? Probably when I slam Kelsey. Yeah, gonna be that's what I went to my head too. Yeah, yeah. So, but I got to just make some more plays, keep making yeah. plays, and keep getting better, man. Is Kelsey a dude that does he talk a lot of shit? No, he don't really talk trash. Well, no. I, probably other people, but he don't really talk trash like that. No, Who talks the most trash that you've come across. Um, the most trash. Uh, I don't even. I don't, I don't really get people that talk trash really like that. Like to me, like there's never been anybody you're like, man, why is this dude talking? Shit, you was talking trash in London when we was, <laughs> was fucking, hey, nah, I remember, I remember, bro. Yeah. Oh, shit, yeah, when we played y'all, he probably was the last person that was talking trash to us, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, For real. we were with the equipment guys earlier, and they were yeah, bringing that probably, up, how I was talking the whole time. Like, Taylor, man, why are you talking so crazy to our whole team? You remember that, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, oh, they yeah. reminded me, of because I probably wouldn't have remembered too much. I do. Yeah, it was I him. do talk a lot of shit, or did. <laughs> and fucking, yeah, I like that, though. You don't talk shit? No, I be talking trash, but it, you know what I mean? You got really to conserve that energy. Like that, so mm -hmm. I be kind of talking to myself. You, feel, you kind of view that as a, like respect though, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like of. when you talk trash and people kind of just walk away, you're like, yeah, yeah. I'm really him. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be a hell so of a It'd be feeling. like a little respect. Yeah. Respect. What kind of badge of honor do you like more? Being known uh, for locking somebody up or being a heavy hitter? I feel like heavy hitter because I'm a big person on style of play, stand the tone. And I feel like you can cover somebody, but that don't really set no tone versus if you go hit somebody, now you got 10 more guys ready to go do the same thing. So, you know what I mean? I, I say definitely hit it. Dude, a safety that fucking hits. I know. Buddha Baker, Cam Chancellor. Yeah. Those type of dudes. Yeah, them guys right there. Man, was Cam still in the league when you... Got in? Did you play him? Um, no, I didn't get to play with Cam. It was one year before I got in. Man, when we played them, I remember walking past him being like, this dude's a fucking safety. He was so big. Yeah, massive. Bro. Massive. Dark visor on. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, it yeah, was him yeah. out there, Ed Reed, Bobby Wagner, KJ, all Legion of Boom. Dudes. Yes. Yeah. You just dream about being part of defenses like that, don't you? Yeah. Who well, I mean, we were in Nebraska. Black shirts. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Game Time, the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports created by fans for fans. Game Time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest possible price. Boys, Messi, Messi coming to, uh, coming to Nashville. What a whirlwind. Scored some last minute tickets on the Game Time app. It's possible with the Game Time app, the biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. And by the way, Messi literally just toys. It's, it's truly like watching a kid that's two grades above everybody else. Just dummy. Like a 10 year old that somehow gets to play in the seven and nine league and they're just toying with them. That's what this motherfucker looked like on Saturday. Uh, the purchase process takes two taps in 10 seconds, and once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone, no printer needed. The app allows you to easily share tickets with friends via text so you can get into the game seamlessly. Download the Game Time app or go to the website, enter your email, and redeem code BUSSIN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Do you think, uh, do you think Florida State could have beat Nebraska? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they fucking couldn't have. Bro. What years were you at Florida State? From 15 to... Like, what was your records out there? Um, my first season, I think we lost, it was 9-2. And, and then right, second season, we was... I mean, my last year was our worst year. I think we lost like four games, four or five games. But, you know, it was kind of on the decline then. Yeah, I feel you. You were too young to be with Jameis Winston, right? Yeah, one year before me. What were the war, like, there had to be war stories yeah, about him in the locker room, bro. Yeah, there were some good stories. You steal that... those crab legs? Nah, man, come on. Y'all stop doing that, man. <laughs> See, why y'all trying, trying to do my school like that? Those crab legs? Nah, come on, man. That man wouldn't do nothing like that, He just that, took him without asking. He just borrowed him. Nah, man. Nah, come on. I nah, don't do He is the most unique personality in the NFL. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's no one like Jameis in the NFL. Yeah. He got his own personality. He don't care what nobody thinks of him. No. He gonna be who he is, and uh. Uh, yeah. If hypothetically, if you're getting ready for a game and someone gets in the middle, 
and they do a W with their hand and they start eating their fingers. How are you reacting? Does that get you fired the fuck up? Yeah, yeah. He, 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 yeah, yeah. He's one of my guys, man. Whatever he do. Like, you feel me? I'm ready to go through a wall for him, for sure. Yeah. There is a part, too. I think there's an element. It's your, I, I, you feel you. I feel you. No, no, you feel it. You, 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 yeah, I see, what you're, I see where you're going. Go, on, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, like, if you know, you know somebody who he is. is unique in that nature to where it's you like, know, you already know who he is, bro. And you know they're like being even more. It's It's almost like, you're gonna laugh, but also be like, hell yeah. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Like, kind of support him, you know? Yeah, yeah. Kind of egg him on to do some more stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's exactly. go. Exactly. Man, I wonder who he's gonna come up with next week. James, get out there. Give us a yeah. speech, man. <laughs> come on. You got to tell Hyped Up. Yeah. I feel like James doesn't know how funny he is. Nah, he's funny for sure. He's the, He's gotta be yeah. one of those dudes that is yeah. just like, man. The, the, the crab light thing I thought was so funny. I don't really even know what even came of that. Nothing came of that, right? Um, it was I just like one remember. of the little stories you hear. Yeah. It was like kind of like local news. Yeah, yeah. crab legs, and that was it. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. What's it going to take for the Chargers to get over the hump? Man, just stay healthy. You guys all, it always feels like you guys get close. Stay healthy, man. All our guys being out there when it's time to play. You know, I, I feel like when you got your main players out there who can make plays, that's what this league about, bro, having your guys out there healthy. And I feel like we just need to do that, and we'll be good. What's the, uh, what's the locker room's mentality on a uh, gentleman named uh, Emmanuel Acho. What's the vibe on him? Yeah. I mean, everybody probably don't know who he is. Um, with, all, with all the, uh, with all the with Herbert, the Herbert, oh, the Herbert oh, you stuff? you talking about the guy that be talking shit about our quarterback? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's smoke with that boy. We, we, we don't like that. But, you know, we just got to fix the narrative about that. We got we to get out there and win some games. And, you know, that'll change for sure. Man, Emmanuel Acho. Yeah, because Acho's talking crazy. Yeah, that's your talk, favorite guy, talking too. talking about our quarterback. Acho? Right? Yeah. That's your favorite guy in media. Oh, that's the one that was talking about uh, Tua and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on now. But the, y'all gave him, y'all gave Acho. You definitely came. You definitely came back. Acho, come on now, stop that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Acho, stop that. Don't yeah, do that. Yeah. No more, man. What was the vibe like during that uh that wild card game last year? Man, it was devastating. That shit. It didn't feel good, man. It it was definitely like. A, a bad taste in our mouth, and uh, like I say, ninety percent of our team felt that. So we kind of, you know, we we get a chance this year to kind of fix that. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it, it was definitely good motivation going into this year. Is that like one of the worst, one of your worst feelings you've had in your career? Yeah, on any level, um, red or pop one or everything. You know, getting five turnovers and not winning in the game. It's like, you know, what I mean, it's it's, it's the odds just aren't there. Like you should have absolutely won that game. Yeah, it's it's just tough. Just uh, you know, you can't predict how the games come. You know, you always try to win the win the turnover battle, win the little battles that you need to win. But it was just devastating. Mm-hmm. Who's a uh, who's a quarterback you uh, you most look forward to playing? Um, Patrick Mahomes, of course. Mahomes, yeah. What opportunities for interceptions? Cause, I mean, you make a play on him. Is he, he the he? You know what I mean? He the guy. You make. I like competition, bro. He said, "I like competition." Herbert or Mahomes? Herbert, easily. Easy. Easily. Mahomes is a Hall of Famer right now. I don't think Herbert's a stud. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to throw shit at him. I'm just trying to. Yeah, Herbert. All day. Every day. Uh, Herbert or. Herbert, bro. It don't matter who you Phillip say. Rivers. Bro. Rivers. Oh, I see. Now you, now, 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 now. <laughs> see, you making it tough. I like yeah. Phil was my guy. Yeah, Rivers. Nah, but I don't know. That's tough. That's a tough. They different, different quarterback. Being a uh, say, like being a defensive guy, what was it like playing with somebody like Phil? Phil was like everything. He was like the coach, the the player, the quarterback. I mean, so he kind of did everything. He made all the line checks. The you know what I mean. So it was kind of like everything with him. And um, you know, they 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 different players. Like I said, did you ever get chewed out by him? Was there ever a time he gave you a, a dig nabbit or anything like that? <laughs> Let me see. Yeah. Now we used to try to make him uh, get on his nerves to make him try to, you know, get mad at the defense. So that was yeah. our goal, try to get him. You, you know, wanted him to curse. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to see if we you can get You wanted to hear an F-bomb. Yeah, yeah, curse. yeah, but it never happened. It never happened? Never. What a guy. Did he never. ever get after somebody on offense and, like, oh, the, you'd, you'd hear stories with, like, Peyton Manning. Like, if a tight end or somebody would drop a ball in practice, he'd, like, get him out. He'd, like, get him off the offense himself. Coach would tell him the tight end to go back on. He'd be like, no, 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 give me somebody in here who can catch. Oh, yeah, like, all the time. ran it like that. All the time. He had that standing. When you came in the huddle, you came on the field, you was going to line up right. If you wasn't lined up right, he was going to say something. And um, it just was that mutual understanding that, hey, when I'm out here in the hood, I need to know what I'm doing. You know, whether you're a running back that got protection or whatever it is, he wanna, you need to know what you're doing. It's got to be so sick to play for a quarterback that 
You know, like how that? long did he? How long did he play? Who? Seventeen Rivers. years. Plus. <laughs> Seventeen years. Yeah. With that wanky ass fucking sidearm throw, checking stuff at the line. <laughs> yeah, checking area. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Playing, playing yeah. on a torn ACL. Yes, in the playoffs. Yeah. Feel the guy, man. Nine kids. Like he was working on and off the field. I thought he had double digits. No, he just went to ten. When he just 10. went to ten, but when he, he was playing, nah, come on, he didn't nah. get to ten until he had to he had to retire, and he was like, "Now nah, I got more time for nah, these kids." Man, my guy got <laughs> another one in the game here. <laughs> Dude, he's got one graduating crazy. college and one about to come out the womb. My boy, he said, con- you in. My guy, congrats. You have a kid, right? Yeah, two years old. Yes, sir. I heard that baby is stacked. Yeah, he looking like a defensive end right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking like, go. He like he gonna be on the DN, but he, yeah. he definitely getting big for sure. I heard somebody might have been a baby, big baby too with the nickname. What is it Pooh Bear? Oh, Pooh Bear? Man. Y'all gotta stop telling I'm the world. Just, I'm just telling. <laughs> hey, just y'all heard. be telling the world and the, everybody all these people this. Dude, where'd you get that cute ass nickname Pooh Bear? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy. Yeah. Where'd you get that cute ass nickname, dude? Uh, my mom used to call me that growing up. You, you little know? fat kid? Yeah, kind of chubby, you yeah. know, with the cheeks and stuff. You so. get bullied? No, nah, I ain't get bullied. You get, no, you weren't having that, huh? Nah, nah, nah. Oh, Pooh Bear, man. Hell yeah. When did you go from Pooh Bear to safety? Um, I ain't started playing safety till I got to the ninth grade because, you know, that was the only position open on varsity. I played offense my whole life. Yeah, like offense running back. Line? Nah, running back. Come Excuse on, me. man. See, <laughs> I was all right, bro. I was all right. I was decent. Um, But, you know, I played offense my whole life, and um, that was the only position open. I didn't want to play JV because I didn't want to play on Thursday nights. You know, I need to be out there Friday night. Friday night yeah, lights. You know, as a, night freshman? Grade, as a freshman, you need to be out there. You know, that's different. Man. You know what I mean? Different yeah, energy. So, I, started, um, I, I was like, I play safety. You know what I mean? I was like, I play it. So, I started learning, and um, I just went from there, man. What kind of hypothetical could we give him? Um, he feels like he'd have some fun with I feel like a would you rather, too, in the back. If we could think about a couple would you rathers, it'd be nice. Um, Whatever y'all need, man. You feel me? I do. So, hey, running back, though, because you think you can still tote that rock? Yeah, I definitely see. I need to get a pick to show the world, like you went up with the ball in my hands, what I yeah. can do. See, they ain't seeing that side of me. They think I'm just, you know, a hitter. You feel what I'm saying? I just, I need the rock in my hands, you know, what I mean? so I can show them. How many did you have last year? Three. Because you had you. I mean, your stash you was three filled up pretty well last three. year. You were you were in the defensive player of the year running at one moment, right? Early, but not not really like that. So your I, gotta my, I gotta get my stacks up, man. I'm telling you, I, I could have swore he was in a conversation at some point. Nah, man, career. I gotta get some more sacks, more more picks. That's on me, then. Yeah. Who's the best player on the team right now? Justin Herbert. Who's the second best player on the team? Derwin James. Who's the third best player on the team? Shit, that's tough. Cause you got some studs now. Like y'all, y'all got a roster. I don't know. Keenan and Kenan is tough. It's crazy. Yeah, Keenan's year yeah, eleven yeah, too. Lil Joey, yes. Eckler. I mean, everybody tough. I don't know. It's tough. Mm-hmm. But you got you one on defense. Yeah, for sure. Over Bosa. Yeah. However you want to say, you trying to make Loki us. You see how you trying to say it. Like, I like me over, over Bosa. <laughs> you see how you say. Who's the hardest hitter you've ever played with? Um, hardest hitter. Um, as a player. Yeah. Um, probably Denzel Perryman. He used to hit hard, bro. Bro. He used to hit people hard. I was gonna see if that's who he's gonna say because he is like a fucking missile. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. insane. Dude, yeah, yeah. he walks and runs like a penguin. He's got his feet out, <laughs> yeah, he, but he tees bro, off he on motherfuckers, so hard, bro. bro. He hit hard, I'm not bro. joking. Like walk around and just, and I'm telling you, like just a white beater, <laughs> just yoke twenty four seven. Yes, <laughs> like Debo. Yeah, got sweats on, white beater, yeah. slides. You say walk like a penguin? Yeah, I mean, he, you know, yeah, he yeah. got, yeah, he's got the yeah. feet out. That's my dog. I'm oh, telling you, yeah, that's my dog. We'll fucking knock your dick in the dirt, bro. <laughs> oh no shit. Yeah, <laughs> oh, boy, that boy here, yeah. boy. Yeah, man. Who were uh, when you were coming out high school? Who were your top five? Top five what safeties? No, top five schools. It's top five. Oh, Florida State. Florida State. No, come Florida on. State. Who who are the top five offers? Oh, my top five offers. So, see, I committed like ninth grade, so a lot of teams didn't really offer me. Now we got to back up. in ninth grade? Yeah. So you started playing safety in ninth grade? Yeah, I committed. Like, going into my ninth grade year. That's I, fucking nuts. Yeah. I, like, how did you pull that offer that that quick? Was it at a camp? Somebody so could watch offered you? me to a junior day, and I'm like a freshman. I'm like, why they invite me to like a junior day type? You know, when juniors and seniors go. Yeah. Y'all, y'all this is after your freshman year, yeah? Yeah, this is going on. No, this was, yeah, this was February of my freshman year. Yeah, so after the season. had already the season, yeah, okay. After, Oh shit! Was it before? Cause that that is uh, you're right. Like the junior days are like in February. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I can't remember, bro. If it was before or uh, it's been so long ago. Yeah. But I can't remember. But um, yeah, I, they invited me to a junior day, but I didn't even know why they was inviting me. So I go to Tallahassee. My dad takes me up there, and um, he offers he offers me Coach Fisher, and um, he said I see you in four years. 
No shit. Yeah, then it kind of went from it. there. Yeah, it kind of went. And then I had Alabama, Ohio State. I had Florida. Was um, anybody making a good push there at the end of your senior year that where you kind of No, nah, but I was already tattooed with Florida State ninth. Oh, for real? 19th grade. It was already over with, bro. Like, tattoos in ninth grade? Yeah, bro. Man. We had a thing at our high you see school. You a kid with tattoos in high school and you're like, oh, fuck, dude. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, I hold basketball. We had a thing. So I used to play basketball and I hold starting five. We had to have like tattoos or you couldn't be out there on the court with us. So we, <laughs> really? Yeah, Yo. so I hold starting five. We was, we was tatted up. So that's how it kind of started for me. When did you have a full sleeve? Um, I ain't see. I ain't go to the sleeve till like junior, senior year, kind of like when I was on my way out. Of high school? Yeah. Brother, you got to understand. You got to understand how that's not a real thing. You had to be thinking to yourself at one point in high school football, <laughs> you're, lo you're looking on the field and you don't see any other guys with tattoos. Nah, you got to think you're an outlier. No, nah, there's a lot of people with tattoos, more than you think. Man. It's Florida. It's different. Florida's a Florida. different world, dude. It's different, man. Them boys, it's Florida. They you know different. about Pahokee, Florida? I know about the muck down of them boys. Yeah. Uh, I know about them. They when like I two, went, three hours away from So them, I went bro. to Michigan and Pahokee, Florida. Yeah. And you know who Denard Robinson is? Yeah, Jack Rabbit. Deerfield Beach. Yeah. Jack Rabbit. They would fucking talk. Yeah. I wouldn't understand a fucking word they're saying, dude. <laughs> It was the most nut shit. That's, like, that's lame, man. No, they, nah, they, that's they wouldn't talk. enunciate. They wouldn't fucking... It was the most wild thing. Yeah. And they'd be like, man, how you doing, man? You I'm like, hey, you gotta... I need a translator. And there's no fucking... <laughs> it was, talk, it was can fucking we, wild. We subtitles while these dudes are talking? Yeah, dude. But Dinar would get with them and they'd be laughing. I'd be like, man, I wish I could laugh with them, but I just can't understand what they're saying. Yeah, man. Well, hokey dudes are different. Now, them boys speak a whole nother lingo down there. Yeah. Sure. Maybe chasing rabbits as their conditioning test. Yeah. They, no, that's they a real thing. Really they really would. They'd be like an acre fence, and they'd be like rabbits, and they'd be like catch a rabbit, that's you're a done. Florida thing. They, they do that. That's oh, fucking legendary. Yeah, they do that in Florida. <laughs> that is some. Yeah, that's some that's weird a Florida shit. Florida thing, man. What's that a Florida thing? Hilarious. Yeah, it's a Florida. They do that in Miami too, like Miami, Central Florida, Jacksonville. They do that everywhere in Florida. So uh, Florida, you think rabbits. football is best football is in Florida? Of course. Come on, bro. And in Texas? Yeah, of course. And in Pennsylvania? Man, any state, any country, any Florida. That's it. Florida. You want to a skilled person? Go to Florida. Really? Well, I don't. I don't disagree with I ain't that at all. The line, Florida's no, fucking I ain't nuts. All and stuff. I'm saying, yeah. Skill position. You get those linemen up north. Over Georgia? No, Georgia got the linemen. See, Georgia, they got like Texas. They got good linemen. Alabama, they got good linemen. You want to a skill? Louisiana. You want to a skilled player? Go to Florida, Louisiana. Lu hey, Louisiana, Louisiana now. now. Yeah, I'm Louisiana. telling you, help them out, bro. Yeah. Who's the best player to come out of Louisiana, in your opinion? The best player. They had some studs now. To come out of Louisiana, the state of Louisiana. The state? See, ooh. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah what about Florida? Florida? You want, I can give you the best. Deion Sanders corner. Okay. What safety. about we, safety? Um, who the best safety? See, I don't like saying myself, man. You just, I mean, you have a couple times. But. Said nah. Herbert, and then he said you. Yeah, but that was being honest, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I say me right now. I don't know. I got to think of some. What about running back? Oh, we got a lot of running backs. Um, I know. Derrick Henry, Henry, probably. Derrick Henry. What about... Did you ever play him? You ever play Yuli? Yeah. No, we didn't play Yuli. That boy was going crazy out there, Yuli. What about a receiver? Who the best receiver we got? Coming out, that came out of Florida. I don't know. Probably in the league. I know probably like Calvin Ridley, one of them boys good. Hey, Calvin Ridley's going to be a menace. Yeah. Free Calvin Ridley, he's back. You see what he said? No. He said, I'm I'm going to make up every single dollar I lost out on last year. Like a true gambler. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, he's I'm betting the house on myself. My boy betting the house yeah. on myself. My boy a beast, man. He's a beast. He's really a beast. And he played for the Jags, though. He's all right, but he's a beast. You want to see him again? You want to yeah. see the Jags again? I want to see anybody we play right now. I'm ready to go. Who's who's your biggest threat besides the Chiefs? Who who, who I like to play? No, like who's your you, biggest, like, threat the biggest threat besides threat the Chiefs? To the Los Angeles Chargers. Besides the Chiefs. I feel like they won a the Super Bowl. They only they Yeah, but there's gotta be there's thirty other teams. I mean, probably the Broncos or the Raiders, they in our division. We gotta win those games. But other threats, I feel like you're gonna meet them. Some teams may other beat them, or we gotta see them when we see them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They ain't really threats. Did you see all the stuff that Sean Payton was saying about Russell Wilson and uh the coaching staff from last year at the Broncos? No, what he said. He basically just fucking crushed them. I won't ask you the question, <laughs> but he was like, they fucking sucked, the coaching sucked, all of it sucked. Oh, uh, man, you know, I don't so, get into none of that, man, you know. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. You know about Acho. <laughs> nah, he can't be talking about us, though. <laughs> yeah. That's different. He's talking about one of my guys. No, Acho Fair stuff enough. is so big, I, there's no way it doesn't make it in the locker room. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. How do you hate on Herbert, though? I don't know. He found a way. I, I have no fucking clue. That's Will's guy. 
we interrupt this episode to bring you Georgia Boot. Georgia Boots are designed for the longest shift and the toughest jobs. The core of Georgia's messaging relies on delivering boots that are as comfortable as they are tough. Boots that you can wear from work to the bar to home, wherever you want. It's blue collar comfort right out of the box. Whether you're working on the front line, fixing that shelf in your closet, grilling out in your backyard, playing on the beach, these Georgias are the best boot for the job. Georgia boots are designed for rugged, demanding work environments and are built to last, making them the most ideal boot for workers in various industries. Georgia boots are designed with comfort in mind, featuring cushioned insoles and supportive technology for all day comfort. Use our code BUSSIN, that's B-U-S-S-I-N, for 20% off at georgiaboots.com. Do not sacrifice, do not sacrifice comfort for the work of your job. Get in the right boot that is ideal for your job, and that is Georgia boot. Back to the episode. Do we have a uh, hypothetical would you rather have skin that changes color based on your emotions or tattoos appear all over your body depicting what you did yesterday? Oh, shit. Nah, I'd rather my skin change color. Because, boy, I'd be living. Name? You feel me? I'd be living. I'd be living. You know what I mean? <laughs> change colors. Oh, Derwin's horny again. Yeah. <laughs> what color would you be on a Friday night? I'm bright. I'm outside with it. I'm, I'm gonna be bright, yellow, yellow, or something out there, man. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, um, what was the hypothetical that we were split on earlier? It was a big one. Oh yeah. Um, would you rather have all of your phone messages leaked and pictures leaked, or get rid of your phone forever? Man, link them. I need my phone, bro. You have everything leak, linked? You would leak all the history of every text you've ever oh, sent? Oh, hell no, 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 no. <laughs> hey, you ain't that, I was bro. with you, you at first, too. Right I had to switch up. Right now today, yeah, yeah, but nah, 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 nah. Nah, yeah, you, you gotta have no, no longer have a phone ever again. I'm on a computer. It don't matter. Exactly. Going back to the landline. Tablet or something, Oh, my God. Oh, what were... As a I love how we just pivot to something yeah. else. That was the worst show. We are the worst show ever. Right, but you switched it like that. All right. What do you think about this year coming up? <laughs> go ahead, Will. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I was going to go back to ball. Like, for your game and your development, where do you feel like you've grown the most, like, since being in the league? I feel like just being a leader and understanding the room and understanding the guys, like, around me, I feel like just me being able to lead more and me being able to understand people more has allowed me to play more calmer and, like, use less athleticism, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, kind of already be there, you know, with my mind and kind of easier for me. Those, like, relationships and confidence, like being a leader and everything else, how do you, when do you feel like that made a jump? Like, were you somebody who was more soft-spoken in the beginning? No. Nah, and now you feel more comfortable or? No, nah, I was always a leader, but I never wanted to be the guy that come in and step in nobody's toes, you know. As a coming as a rookie, you kind of respect the room, you kind of, you know, see who on the team, see who the leaders is. But now it's like, I'm in year six now, bro. So it's like, I kind of understand my role. I understand, you know, what they pay me to do. So I, I understand who, my position. So yeah. It's, and, and it makes more sense to me. I'm more comfortable because, you know, having that time away, those two years, I got to grow. You know, I got to be able to be in the building and see stuff and learn. So it was cool. When you first came in the league, besides Phillip Rivers, like who, who were the staple leadership, like group of this of this team? Uh, it was a guy by the name of Brandon Meebane. He was a big leader. Melvin Ingram, um, he was a leader on the he team. He was a Mel was freak athlete, athlete bro. Yeah, Mel was a leader. Um, when he would do that stand-up rover, yeah, he has to have like three down linemen. He would just pick and choose where he went. Yeah, yeah, for sure. God. And um, I probably say, um, who else was a leader that we had? Keenan was all. Keenan was a leader too on the team, of course. And Casey Hayward, those guys. I bring that up because uh. The last time I saw you, the first time I met you was with the Pouncy Brothers. Yeah. In Florida. Yeah. And I didn't oh, know. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good the, night, yeah. What's that? It was a good night, yeah. It was a solid night. Yeah, those my guys. Yeah. Those like my Pouncey big bro. Pouncy Brothers are fucking different. Now. Yeah, those like my big bro. Florida too, right? Huh? They're Florida guys too. Oh, yeah, come on now. They Polk County, same hometown. Me. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't mean to disrespect. That's Polk County, man. <laughs> he said, yeah, come on now. But uh, what was what were like, what was it like playing with the Pouncy? One of the Pouncy Brothers. Man, it was amazing. It was funny. He, like, it's crazy. I used to chill with him like every day. You know, uh, we used to just chill, hang out. You know, he'll give me just a lot of games, just being in the him being in the league, him seeing a lot of stuff, you know, and telling me, hey, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. So he was like that big brother for me that I never had. You know, someone I can relate to that's from my hometown that then kind of, you know, 
went to college, something I get to see like from firsthand and, you know, being on the Chargers. So, you know, I learned a lot from him, for real. How long are you going to play? Man, I'm, I'm trying to play. If you, got to, if you got to decide how long you played, how long would you want to play? So I can't I can't do it no more. I'm trying to play. I missed out the wheels on two, fall off. I'm, I missed out on two seasons. So I, I'm fresh. So I feel good. So I'm ready. Man, I was hoping you said number so I could come up with a hypothetical. <laughs> would you play if you knew you were going to be, like, would you be a guy who, add the older you get and you become a backup, would you do, like, a backup role? No, nah, I ain't going to be no backup. Bro. You know what I'm saying, though? Like, say you get old. No. Nah, yeah. Like, hey, we want you to mentor these guys. Yeah. We're going to, hey, we're going to draft a guy. Yeah. He's going to play in front of you. Uh, you never you know what the future is. Yeah, I'll be a great leader. You never know. You know, but I feel like my talent, God got me. I'm going to be good. I mean, but God's got everybody to a certain extent. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. by the time, Tom Brady, brother, yeah. like, yeah. besides him, yeah. everybody gets got. Yeah. Him and maybe Aaron Rodgers, too. I'm trying to think of a, I'm trying to think of like a fun hypothetical based off of him, how long he wants to play in the, how long he wants to play. Mm -hmm. You get a Super Bowl, you're done after year seven. Seven years from now? Say you, you either play 12 years in the league, yeah. no Super Bowls, or You made the rest Pro Bowls. And then finish your thing up. I was going to say, 12 years in the league, no Super Bowls. Yep. Or you play seven years and get a Super Bowl. Shit. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. What'd you say, seven years? What was that again? Seven years in the league, in you get a Super over, Bowl. So my... either, yeah, you get a Super Bowl this year or next year. Or you play 12 years and you'll never get a Super Bowl. I got to get that bowl, bro. I got to get a bowl, but I want to play 12. Oh, no, that shit tough, bro. Oh, no, it's tough. I can't you gotta pick. answer. <laughs> I can't pick one, bro. I can't. I don't know. That's tough, bro. I could pass that one. I don't know. What would you do? Seven years and a Super Bowl. I feel like I want to play though, bro. I want to. I know. Yeah, yeah, I, know. I, I want to play though. You feel why me? do you play the game? For to love. Win, to win. win. To win. But the ring. That's like me saying, okay, if I told you I win a Super Bowl, you play two years and you we win a Super Bowl in one year versus you playing eight years and never winning. Which one are you gonna pick? Two years and quit. I'll probably do eight years. Exactly. No That's what I'm saying. No Super Bowl. But you get seven years in, you get a Super Bowl, you got a contract, so you could almost be like, okay. All right, so look. You made money. If you do two years, you're not going to ever see, like, a second contract. So no. I would be like, okay, you want to play eight. I, yeah, because that selfish need for selfish the Selfish need for the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Once you're established financially, it's almost like, oh, it's all about the, it, you know, maybe you could just go Super Bowl. Yeah, like you've done That's it. That's why made the money. And so now having seven is one of those things where it's like, you could just. Yeah. But bowl, if it's bro. not ten. 10 is not 12. 12 is not 7. I mean, 7 right. not 12. Fucking, yeah, we're yeah, doing yeah, it. We're fucking doing good. fucking math out here. Yeah. Look at all of us. Yeah. So you... Yeah. I want to play, bro, because especially I missed two seasons. I want to play. So you did 12. I'm doing... I need to do it. Bro. I got to be out there. Well, let's let's juice this up a little bit. We'll do eight years in a Super Bowl. All uh, right, yeah, you or, got, you got or 13 you got, Or 13 years. You got me with eight. The eight, eight Super Bowl, you got me. You went out the eight, you got me. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, Super Bowl with eight, you got me. You're going to take that one? Yeah, I'll take that one over 13, no bowl. That's... Yeah, seven doesn't sound as good as eight. Yeah, eight sounds better than with the bowl. It sounds bowl. better than eight, nine, and nothing sounds better than ten. Nah, for sure. Fuck. The, the decade, yeah, the decade yeah. is what you need. The elusive year ten. Yeah. <laughs> the elusive year ten. Yeah, definitely. What about, what about uh, seven years Super Bowl? We'll go back to that. But you get 15 years, but you never have a winning season again. Nah, but I got to, but you know how that shit is. You don't win. It's but it's fucking worse. It's the worst to be in the NFL if you're not winning. It's not fun at all. It's, it's, not, fun. it's yeah. not fun if you ain't winning, bro. All right. It's literally the worst. Are you close with Edron James at all? Yeah. That's the, yeah, that's okay. my cousin. Yeah. Did Edron he, uh, James? Yeah. Go ahead, JP. What do you got? I was going to ask if he helped you out as you were, like, coming up into the league. Um. So, like, um, like he was always, like, you know, my dad, because he's, um, my dad's second cousin and my third cousin. So it's kind of like, you know, we had like an outside relationship. And as I, I got older in college and stuff, you know, he, he started, I got his number and stuff. And, you know, we started connecting. Yeah. That's pretty fucking sick. Edron James is your yeah. cousin. Yeah. I was about to say uncle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You who, was your, who was your biggest mentor in the um, league? My biggest mentor? I, I'd say probably like my parents. And then I had like a lot of great coaches along the way that kind of, I can't just give all the credit to one coach because from my Pop Warner's coach to to my high school coach, I kind of had some good coaches that can help, you know, that give you that push, to, you know, to keep going. So I can't just give all the credit to one person. Is there somebody that does stand out when you look back on your, like, journey, career, all of it? 
Yeah, my mom. Like, oh man, this this whether it's coach, parent. Yeah, my mom, dad for sure. Cause I feel like without them, I wouldn't be in the position I am, man. Especially my mom making the sacrifices. Same for my dad, you know. Yeah. I think we're. Yeah, I feel like this has been a fucking. We've hit the dude. Is there anything we're missing? Cause I feel like we got we you know, his guards down. We're having a little bit of fun. Me yeah, who's your favorite Megan. staff member of the Chargers? I'm not bullshitting, Megan. Yeah, Megan was speaking Give very some more flowers. Why Megan? Just, you know, we came in the same time. It's been fun, and um, anything I needed, she's been there. So, you know, we, we locked in. Well, brother, we appreciate you coming on the podcast. Appreciate y'all. Have a healthy year. Thank you, bro. I hope you guys do well. Yeah. Not as well as the Raiders, but on, I hope you fucking that, do bro. well, brother. Come on, now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now. Appreciate Bold you. Bold up, baby. Thank you, T.